danced on the roof all morning. The pups had already made plasticine snakes, glued some really silly collages, and strung some cool necklaces. Frau was just attaching tankers for him when the alarm rang. Although the day was wet and dreary, the pups sprang to action immediately. We whizzed down the street as fast as a fire truck could go, and soon we were at Mimi Yao's house. Mimi was in a terrible fix. She'd thought the dull rainy day perfect for catching up on a sweater she was knitting. She started it a while ago and was eager to finish it, and she certainly did knit up a storm. But when she tried to lift her knitting up to see how long it was getting, she realized with horror that her long, beautiful fur had become entangled with the knitting wool. At first, it just seemed like a problem of pulling a few strands of cat hair out of the wool she was knitting with. But when she looked again, she saw it wasn't that at all. When Mimi Yao tried to pull her knitting down, she found that she had, in fact, knitted herself right into the sweater. The sweater was completely stuck to her. When the pups saw the problem, it took a while before they could think of a way to help her. They finally looked at each other and nodded. Sadly, there was clearly only one way to help Mimi Yao. Smudge told her that he knew how hard she'd worked. Mimi nodded because she really had. He told her that the sweater looked like it was going to be beautiful. Then he said that sadly the only way to get her out was to unravel the sweater. Now I do have to say that Mimi Yao is a very good sport about it. She sighed and gave Smudge the top so he could pull the needles out, and Smudge did. He took the loose end of the thread and pulled and he pulled and he pulled and stitch by stitch, the sweater unraveled. Soon there was a huge pile of wool on the floor, and Mimi Yao was finally free. She felt much better and thanked Smudge and all the pups. And when she looked at the pile of wool, she decided that the next time she had knit with a shirt on, the shirt would cover her fur. And it wouldn't get caught again. Everyone thought that was a good idea. Billy and Tanker thought that knitting was really neat and wanted to know how to do it. So Mimi put on a cover shirt and sat down with them. Billy and Tanker loved the lesson, and everybody smiled when they realized that the sweater had already begun to grow again. Back at home, Dilly and Tanker gave knitting on their own a try. They, they didn't get too far, but they, they sure had some fun. And Smudge decided to work on putting some photos in his photo album. Farah had a plan of her own. She pulled out her scrapbook and drew very important pictures on three pages. She colored them in. When they were done, she pulled them out of the book and she stuck them up on the notice board in the kitchen, so that all the pups could see them. I admired them through the window, and Farah was delighted. She told me they were all about how to be a pup. The first picture was of a pup riding on me to a rescue. I thought that I looked rather good, <laughs> and the second one was a pup helping a little turtle. Farah said it was Tortellini. The third one was all the pups together with me in the background. They were terrific pictures, and I thoroughly enjoyed looking at her work. Farah pulled up a chair to wait for the other pups to come to the kitchen, and it wasn't long before they did. When they bustled in, they talked about peanut butter and about washing hands. Nobody talked about her beautiful "How to Be a Pup" pictures. Farah very politely hummed and, <clears throat> and cleared her throat so they would look that way. They did, but then Tanker said he needed some milk, and Dilly couldn't reach a cup. Farah waited a few minutes more, and then she said that she really wanted everyone to look at her pictures, and of course they all did. And they thought the pictures were nice. 
But Smudge wanted to stomp in mud puddles, and as soon as he said it, they were off. Farah was very disappointed, as you can imagine. I think she sat there for a while when I saw a little purple umbrella come out to me. Farah was underneath it. She told me that no one had even cared about her project, and she felt it was very important. She wanted the pups to think about what she'd put on the wall. Why, well, I said that perhaps the pups were busy doing what interested them. She'd done the project because it interested her, and she had a wonderful time doing it. And whether anybody enjoyed looking at it or not, if she had a great time, then nothing else mattered. Sarah looked at me through the raindrops. She told me, I always knew what to tell her, and that was one of her favorite parts about me. And she gave me a big hug and raced over to join the others who were dancing up a storm in a great big puddle. I smiled because I was happy Farah had understood them. Oh, <laughs> and I love getting hugs. The How to Be a Pup project was only the first time that Farah did something all by herself and enjoyed it completely. And each time she created something by herself, she didn't worry about what anyone thought. She only worried about one thing, having lots of fun. And I know the next time someone walks right by something special that you have done, you'll remember that it doesn't have to be special to them. It only has to be special to you. Here's some things that are fun to do. Fun for the friends who play with you. Fun for a bunch or just for two. Fun for me and fun for you. <laughs> like making a puppet show. You don't need a lot of special equipment. Just a place for a stage, a puppet, a story, uh, and somebody who will sit and watch. 